Perfect. First of all, um, thank you guys so much for coming through, giving like your ask you or opportunity to ask you questions. So, and it's actually my first time interviewing anybody. So, uh, cut me some slack. I'm gonna try my yeah, best. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> also, we don't know okay. what we're doing either, so... Alright, thanks. Let's go then. You go, Lou. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, so um, most of us went to school together. And we've known each other since we were about 16, I think. And... Um, so yeah, we've probably known each other for about six or seven years, Whoa. and then we met Georgia, our violin player, at when I went to Guildhall uh, in London as Ooh. music school. Um, we've got uh, Tyler plays bass, I play mm-hmm. saxophone. Got May on keys, Isaac and Luke play guitar, Isaac sings as well, and Charlie plays drums, and yeah, Georgia on violin. Oh wow, that's great! So seven members. That's mm-hmm. that's actually like, how do you guys make it work with seven members? Because I'm like, I used to be in a band. There was four of us. That's that was already way too much. But uh, like, so how how do you make it work with like seven members? I was actually talking to a friend of mine last night about this because he's in a three piece band, and they said that they have arguments all the time and they never really come to any conclusions. It just takes so long to figure things out, like musically and like things with. They can't even figure out what their band name is. And yeah, we had that for a bit, but I've realized that actually seven people actually, when you know each other as well as we do, makes decision-making much faster. Because if like, if you doubt any of your thoughts or someone doubts your thoughts, there's always like at least five other people that can be there to back it up. Um, mm. Whereas in like a three piece, you know, if someone doesn't like it and you do, then you just like it the stalemate, you know? Um, yeah so I feel like you could always like whenever you're stuck on something there's always more brains to to help each other figure yeah. out something like yeah that's so cool and we all um, because, because of you know, how long we've known each other and we're actually best friends um, we trust each other's opinion and know each other so well that like it just it just works we, we really are just best and friends it really shows in the music like I don't mean to, like anything, but like it's it shows. Like I could tell you guys are such a tight unit. I've been listening over the past week, and it's it's so many things blew my mind. I could uh, I sense a lot of like some grungy type sound in there. Like any any of you guys are fan of like uh, some some grunge Nirvana type when there's like Sonic Luke. Youth anything. Luke is. Yeah, Luke is. Yeah, Luke really likes grunge. I mean, like we all like Nirvana. They're a great band. <laughs> so yeah. I think I think well we couldn't do it ourselves. If you if you got the money then yeah do it yourself but independent labels are the way really because you get good you you tend to get better rights get more you tend to get um more uh, a better percentage on your on your record sales and you if it's an independent label you're way more likely to be you know the person that you'll probably know the person who's at the top of the company so they're less likely to fuck you over because you've met the head honcho you know so you you're like uh, i think i think it's it's definitely the way to go i think sometimes the, the major labels have loads of they, they can um tempt you with loads of money up front but you won't have as good an experience as you would on an independent label but yeah i think with do it diy if you can afford to and place like band camp really help people doing it themselves a lot but for what we wanted to do we couldn't really afford to do it ourselves i think i lose myself in the light of the tv courtesy of her father spend like a weekend together writing and cooking food and playing games that's what we mm. did at the beginning yeah. Okay. That's 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 about it. Just just get together and do something. Just like, mm. but but make it like a residential thing. Like stay together for a few days straight. 
Yeah. Make sure you cook. And make sure you talk okay. and play games. It's not yeah. all about the music. Sometimes it's like the vibe and everything, how you guys all gel and glue conversations. Mm. Yeah, place. that's that's fundamental for us. Yeah, 100%. They were the songs that we'd had, that we'd written in the first like year and a half of the band's existence. So we felt like um, it, it it ended up coming together as an album, but it wasn't really written as an album. Um, and we had other songs as well that we were playing live that we'd written more recently, but we thought that they kind of fitted best on the second album. We have... We kind of, we released this album with the second album in mind, definitely. Um, so yeah, I think it was it was more a case of the songs that we already had that we felt would go well on an album rather than uh, we're going to make this six songs, you know. Every room, main line. Massively, because. Basically, the whole of the first album was written on stage. Like we would come to, obviously we'd have new songs when we come to play each gig, but the songs really relied on live performance for them to progress. And then after playing them a hundred times to a live audience, it would find its place. Whereas obviously now we can't do that. And it's made us um, consider the music in a different way, talk more, amongst ourselves like trust our opinions more and have final things ready to go having never performed them before um it's just much more considered music because of that i think it's much better because of that it doesn't rely on like smashing your guitars or whacking the drums really hard in order to like entertain people because we don't have anyone to entertain but ourselves right now and when you remove the audience that kind of aggressive way of playing just isn't fun it's not fun to do that in a room, just the seven of us. So um, mm. it's more considered and better. I uh, I noticed because you guys also have like violin and saxophone, right? Would you ever like consider smashing them too? No, no <laughs> chance. Very expensive. <laughs> Way too expensive. <laughs> if that you could afford Oscar, like sorry. multiple um, violins and saxophones, then maybe. Yeah, One yeah. Day. If we right. signed to if we signed to a major, then maybe we could do that. <laughs> Yeah, only in a couple of months now, going to go record the second album. Uh, hopefully start getting gigging again as soon as it's kind of safe in the UK and Europe. And then when we can afford it, be going to different parts of the world as well. Um, obviously, like Thailand would be awesome. Like these kind of places to go, like go to places we haven't been to before, see different parts of the world, keep making music with our friends pretty like boring a pretty boring answer but yeah just to record more music and go and travel to cool places yeah to leave Europe right. want to get out Europe. of please come to Thailand though, like for real like I cannot yeah 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 like, mm. like we're gonna go crazy yeah, yeah. well yeah love to I am invincible in these sudden glasses I am modern Scott Walker I'm a surprisingly smooth talker and I'm invincible if it's somewhere that I've never been before, then I'd rather it was an intimate gig because I think um, you could experience the city better. The festival, like, I'm sure it would be um, a great vibe, but festival vibe is quite a universal thing. You could be, right. you can create that vibe in many different countries. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. You could be anywhere at a festival, but yeah. when you're playing at a little independent venue, you find the, like, you find out what the place is really like, what the people are like who go there, like, yeah. you know. Uh, um, I'm listening to Surf's Up by the Beach Boys at the moment, loads. I've got yeah. that on quite a heavy rotation. Um, yeah, still listening to Wise Blood. 
Titanic Rising. I feel like I say that every time someone else <laughs> still listen to it a lot. And i the new uh Lana Del Rey album is pretty good. The white yeah, song with white blood stuff is, on it. is really good. Yeah. It's um, yeah. I'm listening to um uh King Crimson Red. That's like one of my favourite songs of all time. Um and also, in the, this I realise one of my favourite albums ever, No Irony, um, Emotion by Carly Rae Jepsen. Mm. It's just like the, the happiest album ever. It makes me feel so good. Mm. Try, I'm listening yeah. to lots of Joni Mitchell as well at the moment. Nice. Both sides now, that album is awesome. Well, Isaac and Luke <laughs> used to be really good skateboarders. Well, Luke uh, still is. Isaac doesn't skateboard anymore, but they used to skateboard. Uh-huh. Um, um, I play a lot of football. Like most most weeks I play football. And in fact, you're allowed to play football again on Monday next week. Really? Get together and play football. So oh, I'm let's go and, play football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. I've got a game in Crystal Palace on Tuesday. Really? Mm. Who are you playing Not with? Not at the football team, no, but no, at, no. Uh, with Morgan, <laughs> nice. with Morgan from Black Midi and um, some other people. I've always been a big walker. I love walking, but in COVID, especially when all the public transport was completely down, um, I had to walk everywhere. And at the time, I was living with Luke and Isaac in a place called Surrey Keys, which is quite far away from anything and very desolate. Um, so you had to walk a good hour, hour at least, in order to get anywhere that was kind of nice. Um, mm. So now I go for like three hour walks most days, just to kind of like see London in a different way. Uh, there's actually two like forests in, or there's actually a, a few forests in London, but there's um, there's a couple quite near me called Queen's Wood and uh, Highgate Wood in North London, and they're easily accessible by the tube, um, and you can get to these two like beautiful woodland areas, um, and it's just lovely. It doesn't feel like you're in London at all. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Um, and then Big Ben, obviously, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, Hampstead Heath is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, and in summer, hopefully the Lido's will open again because you can go swimming there. Um, and they're kind of like giant ponds that you swim in. But mm-hmm. um, And I mean, the Thames never gets old. I walk there most days. And, and it, walking there at night with all the lights it is the most beautiful place. It really is. Um, and also Borough Market is really 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 nice lots of good food there Mm -hmm. okay i just have to visit one day i cannot wait Um, oh you've never been never ever but i really want to it's awesome it's a great city People have been introduced to those sounds a little bit in gigs before COVID happened because, like Lewis said before, there were some songs that we didn't put on the album because they were too, they were just from a different different time, like they were too um, too much in the vein of album two. Um, mm. So it's not crazy out of the blue, but um, it's very different sound to album one. After I sat- the windmill windmill. in Brixton that's the that's the main the main place for that um very supportive venue Tim Perry the guy that runs the music side of it just kind of lets anything happen there um which is a mentality that not many places in London have um so it means that 
no matter how inexperienced or how <clears throat> how inexperienced or how like uh unprepared you are for a set he'll give you a set and yeah. because of that and because of that like non elitism and openness and welcoming feeling about the place it means that it breeds loads of talented people black midi um some squid stuff shame sorry goat girl fat white family all of these people apparently florence and the machine florence and the machine and larue and larue yeah yeah and block party apparently really awesome Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I heard that Black Midi was also a big influence to you guys. That's super cool. Mm, yeah, definitely. Come down in her childhood bed and write the words I'll one day wish that I had never said. Now all that I became is die before the form thread. Yeah, I think this oh, is right. a strong year for indie music. I think this is like one of the strongest that I can think of in a while. Like three bands releasing an album this year that pe- that are like good albums. We released an album, Black Midi are releasing an album, Squid are releasing an album. I think especially for London indie music, it's definitely been a definitely a good year. Yeah. I think I think it will just grow, hopefully. Yeah, I, I think I, I don't really know what happened, but there was like a wave that began in like 2019 or so where guitar music was becoming popular again. And I don't think it was for any particular reason other than like that's just what happens sometimes music like uh randomly has waves of different genres that are popular and you know those bands were always there guitar music was always there it didn't die it's just accidentally what happened so who Mm. knows maybe uh maybe soon it will be uncool who knows probably we'll probably make it uncool (laughs) well then we'll stop playing guitars yeah yeah yeah. everyone will be playing saxophones (laughs) six phones yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as a guitarist, I'm so happy to hear that. It's like some sort of like reaffirmation. It's gonna be okay. So yeah. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna be okay. Long. It's gonna be fine no matter what happens. Yeah. Just keep making music and keep rocking in the free keep world. Keep on rocking in the free world. Rocking the free world. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that's about it. I'm I'm so honored to interview you guys. Like, oh, I thought you. it would be oh, much, no. much harder, but uh, it was it was actually pretty fun. I like doing this. Yeah, no, it's Thank good. You. No, you're yeah. good. You're good. You're good. Much, much more interesting than a lot of the interviews we've had. Totally. Yeah, yeah. It didn't Don't seem like it was your it. first. Yeah, yeah.